I'm here with another House of Leaves video. Are you ever gonna get sick of these? I hope not because I have a lot of uh, video ideas for them. Um, this time I want to talk about colors in House of Leaves. Um, there's some obvious colors and none, some not so obvious colors. Um, yes, <clears throat> I want to start off by saying I think the more that I read House of Leaves, the more that I look into House of Leaves, the more that I research House of Leaves, the more that I'm left with the sense that it is meaningless. That there is nothing there for us to find beyond, you know, some cool things. Um, and I think that's part of the appeal as well. Um, and part of, you know, Mark C. Denlisky, um kind of, he makes fun of academics in the book, um, you know, and like makes fun of us for like trying to find deepness within House of Leaves. Um, and it can be there, like don't get me wrong, like there's a lot to discuss, there's a lot of issues, you know, but sometimes it's just kind of cool to see what you can find in House of Leaves. Um, it's more like a, a Where's Waldo type <laughs> experience. Um, yeah, so that's how I'm approaching this thing with colors. I'm just kind of like looking at the colors. I'm not trying to find any deeper meaning. I just thought these things were cool and I wanted to share them. Um, first of all, there's like the whole idea of... First of all, there's like this whole idea about the subjectivity of color and we can see that in how like Zampano spells it with a U and Johnny doesn't. It's so, like we're first right there just like color is subjective um, and the way you look at it. Um, you know, you bring your own cultural background to how you look at these colors. Um, so, blue um, is obviously one of the most recognized colors in House of Leaves. The word house um, is written in blue in the text. Um, so yeah, um, one of the common phrases that stuck out to me was this phrase, out of the blue. And I thought that was interesting and I looked more at it and it seemed to pop out most times in the text, in Johnny's text, and then when he was talking about Thumper. She was always out of the blue with her. Um, and I associate that with unheimlich, um, the not at home, because blue house is in, is in blue. And if you're out of the blue, you're out of the house, you're not at home. Um, so you're anxious. Um, so Thumper causes a lot of um, anxiety, maybe. Um, and she wears a blue sweatshirt when we first see her as well. Um, so she um, uses this phrase, always talking a blue streak um, to my boss. And she's she's described as doing this, talking in a blue streak, um, which means talking rapidly without stopping. Um, and it references, you know, the speed of a bolt of lightning, um, you know, blue streak. So that's interesting. Um, another thing about her is Somehow, she was all already standing there, right in front of him, right in front of me, talking to him, reminiscing, touching his shoulder, even winking at me, and lewd, wow, out of nowhere, out of the blue, where had she come from, or, for that matter, when? So we got this lot of questions about, like, Thumper. Um, and when he's talking to Thumper, he says, All of which was fine and good, until for some reason, out of the blue, I changed the plan and started to tell her about Zampano and the trunk and my crazy attacks. Um, so these things, you know, are constantly changing around Thumper. Strange how that works. I'm no longer around, and suddenly, out of the blue, she calls. Out of the blue. Again. Um, and then, uh, again with Thumper. In fact, maybe that's why Thumper had called me, because this exquisite-looking woman had, out of the blue, spoken my name. Um, yeah, so maybe there's a lot more to look into, in two regards of this of the blue, thumper, unheimlich um, sense of anxiety. Um, there's some other references around blue. Uh, I mean, Navitson's nickname, Navi, could also be Navy, which is a shade of blue, right? It also disrupts your reading, and Hustle Views does that a lot. Um, you know, the house isn't normal, and the fact that the blue um, in the text isn't normal either. It doesn't fit in with the rest of the text. Uh, we also get reference to a thing called the Sharinkov light on page 398, um, and that's a type of radiation that emits a blue light, um, like the Will of the Wisp, which um, 
is has a blue light. Um, Nevinson's Dream, where people jump into a well. Some are saved by a violent blue light. And those that aren't continue their descent into oblivion. Um, and then um, at the end of Nevinson's experience in the house, we get this quote, Sure enough, the final frames of Nevinson's film capture in the upper right hand corner a tiny fleck of blue crying light into the void. Um, yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of blue being something that rescues you or um, can be deceptive, like the Will of the Wisp or this radiation. Um, architectural blueprints are also blue, which is interesting. Um, there's also blue screen in filming. I believe Dan Levski actually said that, referenced this in one of his interviews, um, that his book was a lot like film and it's about a film <laughs> and um, we know green screen but before it used to be a lot of blue screen um, for editing and stuff like that. Um, and Zampano's gun also has a blue finish. So there's a lot of instances of blue in House of Leaves. Uh, but that's not the only color, obviously. We have the color red as well um, in regards to the Minotaur. Um, and specifically in regards to the Minotaur, um, a reference I found was um, when we're talking about Tom's keys, um, one of them is spelled K-Y-E, um, and that could just be, you know, a typo, but um, Kai is how I'm going to choose to pronounce it, is also plural for cow. Um, and the red cow, the red heifer, was a type of sacrifice in the Old Testament. Um, and that, that was for um, a bread a red unblemished heifer was sacrificed if you had come into contact with a corpse. Um, and there's a lot more around it. Um, it's also interesting in the Bible when um, Jesus talks, it's a, in, written in a red text in some of them. And so there may be this idea of like, maybe Zampano is the creator, he's God, um, Johnny is his son, Jesus, and Johnny is sacrificed to the Minotaur, let's bring in the Greek myths on top of the Christian myths, uh, or the Christian myths built on top of the Greek myths. Um, so like, for what sins um, was he sacrificed? Because the red cows were touching the dead. Um, so is Johnny like a reminder of, you know, his dead wife, or maybe his dead friend, um, or his dead son? And there's also, that brings in the question of fathership, uh, Minos's wife, um, Pasiphae, was the Minotaur's mother, um, and so he could claim fatherhood over that child. Um, that's another interesting question there. Um, there's also references to Redwood um, in the text, um, and Redwood was actually a uh, short story written by Mark Z. Danilevsky. I'm actually going to read a uh, bit from an interview here. Um, so the interviewer is Cinda Gregory. And they've said, you refer to Redwood as a piece in a bit of writing. Would you describe it as a short story, a meditation, or what? And Mark C. Danileski replied, it was a bit like a novella in some ways, and more like a screenplay in others, but it's hard for me to fit it into a category. I wasn't concerned with a specific narrative structure or a set of grammatical rules. Basically, it was just an outpouring, a means of articulating this torrent of conflicting emotions I was feeling about my father. My sister met me when I finally reached Los Angeles, and we went home and looked after my father until his cancer went into remission. At that point, I presented him with my story as a gift. His response was unbelievable, full of rage, outraged, I think, by the audacity that I'd written something so passionate and so focused on him. And so he applied all his years of intellectual edge and shredded me, going on to describe how useless art was, demanding why I didn't just go get a job at the post office. Well, I probably should have expected this reaction, but I was just devastated. My first response afterward was to attempt to eliminate myself from this equation. I was an affront to my father's will and my father's place in the universe, and so rather than challenge that will in that place, I would sacrifice myself. And I did exactly that, the closest thing to suicide I could think of. I tore up the manuscript of Redwood into hundreds of pieces, flung them into a dumpster in the alley, and spent the next few days in a kind of emotional coma. Ripping this thing apart in the Dionysian manner was a violent act, but certainly not one inspired by joy and wine." Um, so yeah, we see the, again, <laughs> red sacrifice father-son relationships. 
I think that's what red really has to do with it. Um, and we get on page 412, we get um, Lude saying he's going to go to Vegas and lose it all on red. Um, you know, just that's a gambling concept, but it could also be like, you know, losing your mind or, you know, what happened to Marcy Danileski there. It's also interesting, other references to red um, are the all red melancholy king of hearts, uh, which is known as a suicide card because I'll put a picture of the card here. Um, it looks like the king is stabbing himself in the head with a sword. Um, and then we also get reference to Wyeth Red, and that's interesting because initially when you look at Wyeth Red, um, the artist that comes up um, is not the artist that the color belongs to, but the father of that person. So Jamie Wyeth, I didn't write down his father's name, I think it was Alan maybe, um, was a well-known artist and his son became a well-known artist. And the Wyeth Red is referencing um, a house that Jamie Wyeth painted called the Red House because I looked through all you know, Wyeth's, the other Wyeth's um, most well-known paintings, and there weren't a lot of red in there, um, but this one red house picture stood out, and it's by his son, not the father. So I think that's pretty interesting. Let's move on to another familial relationship here with the color purple. Um, there actually is, in the full color edition, a purple text, um, but we'll talk about that um, later. First we're going to talk about Pelafina. Yes, the color purple. Um, is associated with Pelafina. Um, she says on page 630 that she had long, ridiculous purple nails. Um, after she was talking about choking her son, um, you know, she had these purple nails. And then she uh, mentions that she wants luggage in certain colors, and those are amethyst, heliotrope, lilac, shades of purple. So she really likes purple. What I then began noticing, <laughs> going back and rereading uh, Johnny's parts, was that every time he's around something purple is when he has his panic attacks. Um, if you look at it, so f um, for example, on page 70, he says, I start filling caps with purple, concentrating on its texture, the strange hue, imagining I can actually observe the rapid pulse of its bandwidth. These are the stupid thoughts, and as if to confirm that sentiment, darkness pushes in on me, extremely long fingers. Purple, he was looking at the purple ink, he was studying it intensely, and then he has a panic attack. On page 149, um, he's listening to the song Purple Rain. The next page, he has a panic attack. In his dream, he's getting attacked by someone in a plum-colored shirt. Wonder who could be wearing plum? <laughs> um, then he, he sees all these hakarandas. I only know how to pronounce that word because of Encanto. Thank you, Encanto. Um, hakarandas. Um, me, they only unsettle, filling me with dread. Why would hakarandas do that? Well, they're purple. They're purple flowers. Um, and then it says straight out on page 501, purple, I hyperventilate. So like he has <laughs> these issues with his mother and that color purple, he always has a panic attack. I thought that was really neat to, once I noticed it um, and going back and like seeing the other correlations um, between purple and Johnny freaking out. Um, and then we have the underworld and Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, um, a quote from it is used in one of the epigraphs. Um, so, in, uh, just I'm not going to tell you the whole story of Gilgamesh, <laughs> go read it, um, but some of the interesting things about it are in Kindu and Gilgamesh um, killed the bull of heaven, um, so, you know, minotaur bulls, red heifers, and because of that, in Kindu is sentenced to death. Um, and a rule for in Kindu going into the underworld was to wear no purple clothes, no purple makeup, and Inkindu broke all the rules, including this. So he's wearing purple in the underworld and is breaking the rules. And we see Pelafina, her favorite color is purple, is she in the underworld? We get a lot of references to Dante's Inferno as well. Um, and uh, the, the text that is in purple, um, and it's crossed out, is what I'm remembering now. Um, and that's in Johnny's writing, but it's in Pelafina's color. And it's Pelafina remembering the story of the dead baby. So like that calls into question the authorship as well. Then I want to just talk about the other colors, because um, there are other colors in the book. Um, the keys are red, yellow, green, and blue. And Pelafina's pills are matter, which is red, uh, azure, which is a shade of blue, Celadon, which is a shade of green, and Gamboge, I'll put that word on the screen because I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, is yellow. 
So the keys, Tom's keys, are the same color as Pelafina's pills. Um, and talking more about um, Pelafina's colors, because she these pills, um, she refers to by the colors, and um, I looked up what those pills could be. Uh, so matter um, is from rose matter, and it actually may cause birth defects and miscarriages. And we already know there's like a dead baby story in the book already. Azure, um, between it's a blue color, it's also the color of the sky. Um, I like the the Matrix. The Matrix came out, um, you know, just before this book did. Maybe this could be a reference to the blue pill in Matrix. Maybe a bit of a stretch, but you know. Um, Celadon is uh, green. It's named after a shepherd who wore green ribbons, and ribbons are significant in House of Leaves as well. And this could actually be reference to the pill. Oh. Oh, pill names. I can never pronounce them correctly. Um, Aripiprazole, which is an antipsychotic used to treat schizophrenia. We know, you know, chances are that Pelafina is schizophrenia because there's a lot of references to schizophrenic works um, and the DSM within House of Leaves as well. And Gamboge, it's a yellowy color pill and it's a laxative. So, you know, Pelafina was constipated. We also get Karen Green, her last name's Green, um, and ribbons. Um, so pink ribbons, uh, both Karen and Pelafina actually wear pink ribbons in their hair, it's referenced, and uh, on page 599 we get Pelafina talking about Hawthorne's faith in pink ribbons, and this is coming from the story Young Goodman Brown by uh, Nathaniel Thorne, Hawthorne. Um, so Brown dreams that his wife Faith is a witch in his whole world is not what he thinks it is, and Faith wears pink ribbons in her hair. And at the end, things happen in the story, I'm not going to go through and explain the whole story, um, but in the end she's gone. Um, my Faith is gone, there is no good on earth, and sin is but a name. Come devil, for to thee this world is given. Um, yeah, and um, page 523 is where we see the reference to Karen wearing pink ribbons in her hair. Um, so yeah, that's just my exploration of colors without too much meaning there. I don't want to go too in-depth um, and write a whole essay about all the different colors because that would probably end up being like 50 pages long. Um, yeah, um, let me know what you think about the colors in House of Leaves and thank you for watching.